Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll have a look at the five day precipitation temperature as we still have to we still do have some dry weather over the next five days easterly breeze so a little bit chillier on the temperatures but nothing too crazy cold but as we head towards the end of April and the start of May it does look like a real possibility now quite likely we do see much colder conditions prevailing being end of April early early May it does look like like, um, things are not going to be crazy cold. They're not going to be like if it was cold in January or February. But it's going to be very much bringing things back to a wintry sort of feel in terms of cold days, maybe high single digits maximums, a cold wind chill, overnight frost, and you can even rule out a few wintry showers as well. As it's looking like we're good, going to be good at good five degrees plus below average um, with a proper northerly polar plunge coming in. So remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So do have a look at the live radar at the moment, we do have high pressure to the north, which is giving dry conditions over Scotland, Norway, uh, Scandinavia in general, Denmark, and this high pressure is bringing in easterly winds. Now to the south we've got a cut off low, and that's where you can see there's loads of showers towards southern France, Portugal, Spain, down into sort of Barcelona, a big air of low pressure there bringing heavy rain and thunderstorms. And it's all formed because of this cut-off low. And it, we could see some of these showers spiral into the UK over the next four, five days or so. But um, at this stage, it is uh, still a little bit up in the air. And it doesn't look like anything persistent is going to be moving in. Just maybe a few showers here or there. But for the UK, for the time being, it's pretty dry. Some cloud around the sun, but it's still pretty beautiful, especially in the east. Um, and we will continue. Well, it's specifically beautiful in central areas, eastern uh, and a few western areas as well. Along the coast, though, as I said, uh, there, because of the easterly breeze, there will be a few clouds around as well. And if we do look at the temperatures on top of that, you can see, again, those warmest temperatures are in central areas, perhaps even into parts of western areas as well. And as I said, along that far east coast, across northeast England, parts of east Anglia as well, into eastern Scotland, a little bit chillier with the easterly flow bringing in a bit of a more of a wind chill with that. And as I said, central areas are looking really quite warm and pleasant out there at the moment. So you have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at the precipitation temperature over the next five days. You can see generally drier conditions today with a few clouds around, especially on that northeast coast. And we do see through tomorrow a bit more cloud around in the south, perhaps with a few showers in the far southwest, but nothing too crazy. That continues into Saturday with a few showers around across southwestern areas and parts of Southern Ireland as well. And we continue through Sunday again, a few showers around and Monday again some showers around with some thicker cloud in places but it's nothing crazy at all uh, still pretty decent conditions for most um and yeah dry and reasonably warm if we do have a look at those temperatures not quite as high as last weekend or uh which was very warm indeed in terms of getting up into the low 20s for some but it's still decent you can see this afternoon 18 19 degrees uh, is being seen and tomorrow we're going to continue to see those temperatures rise chilly in the morning so as i said with overnight frost in a few regions but nothing crazy at all most areas mid single digits but by friday afternoon again you see 16 17 degrees perhaps bullseye being sort of northwest england towards the liverpool area perhaps seeing the warmest conditions perhaps uh because of uh of the fern effect coming across um, the hills in northern England. Uh, again, bringing those warmer temperatures there, but still widely 14 to 16 degrees, nothing too crazy. And every Saturday, again, temperatures back up to around 14, 15 degrees. So not cold, but not massively warm along the far south coast, maybe 16, 17 degrees. And that continues into Sunday, again, 15, 16, 17 degrees, cold along the east coast. And again, through Monday, we can see a bit of an overnight frost in a few areas. And by the afternoon, once again, maybe 11 to 13 degrees, chilling uh, a little bit. And again, if we have a look at those upper air temperatures, you can start to see some cooler air starting to push in with cold, much colder air to our northeast. So interesting to see what happens in the next sort of seven to 10 days, as I said, with that colder polar air looking likely to move in. And if we do have a look, a look detailed look at that with the longer range, we do start with the GFS, and then we'll have a look at the GM and the ECMWF. You can see at the moment, easterly winds with those cut-off lows towards Europe, bringing those showers in. We could see some of those showers over the course of the weekend, especially on the south, but I'm not expecting anything too crazy. 
As we're towards the end of the weekend, you can see more of a northeasterly flow, perhaps turning things a little bit colder with the colder air mass. We'll have a look at the air masses in a minute, by the way. And beyond that, you see high pressure is moving towards Greenland. And what this does is starting to bring a north, more of a northerly airflow. And by day 10, we're plunging into a bitterly cold northerly wind with low pressure in around it. Could be quite unsettled um, and cold. So if you do have a look at those 850 HPA temperatures, and yeah, nothing too crazy at the moment. Cool weather though coming in by the end of the weekend, start of next week. But we see that polar plunge start to arrive. Much cold air spreading in towards Europe. Nothing crazy. Minus five land may through, move through for quite a few. Again, it's nothing crazy. If this was in January or February, we could see the minus 15 line move through. But being end of May, uh, end of April, half May, it's not going to be too cold. And you continue to see that cold air is moving towards the UK. Pretty chilly. And you can see just towards Europe, it's much, much warmer potentially 20 degrees warmer um, uh, with that. If we do run it back and have a look at the temperature deviation as well, good indicator of how it fares towards average. And you can see we're in those blues and potentially getting towards the dark blues, if not maybe even purples in a few locations as real cold air does move in. And again, if we have a look at the 850 HPA potential equivalent temperature, again, showing the uh, showing it in a, another sort of way, you can see again these blues and purples spreading southwards towards northwest Europe and specifically the UK, turning things really chilly in. Indeed. And you can see at the moment we're in lighter blues, so a little chilly feel, but nothing crazy cold. All that's still above the Arctic, and it is heading towards the UK. Now, we've got pretty, quite a lot of certainty with it, because as we'll see with the GM and the Eastern Blue F, they both have a similar setup. Not quite going for it at this stage within a 10-day time frame, but they have the setup there. So we do have a look. You can see the easterly winds over the next few days. And high pressure heads towards Greenland, and we start to move into a northerly wind by day 7. We have low pressure towards Scandinavia, low pressure coming out of the Arctic and right towards day 10. You can see this low pressure is heading southwards from Iceland, high pressure filling in behind towards Greenland, and you can see cold air is spilling out of the Arctic again within this low pressure system. Look at the temperature deviation, real cold air starting to spread southwards towards the UK. So although it doesn't completely come off on the GM run, it is the same setup and most likely will come off if we did run it on another day or two. Again, if we have a look at the Eastern Blue F run, see how that does compare. Again, easterly winds over the next couple of days, continuing into the weekend. And by the end of the weekend, transferring more into a northerly wind, turning a little bit chillier. But it's right at day 10 where we see this again, low pressure plunging out of Greenland and through Scandinavia towards northwest Europe. Pulling that wind into the north, you can see bitterly cold air is spreading towards the UK. Again, temperature deviation, purples, dark purples, 10, 12 degrees below average, spreading down through uh, through Iceland towards the UK. Again, it's not going to be completely freezing in the UK. It's going to be well below average, though, with chilly surface conditions, with overnight frosts likely as well. So you do just have a look at that on the ensemble charts. Now, the GFS ensembles have been a little bit more pessimistic towards this over the last few days, but as we'll see with the East India F run, they're much more optimistic in terms of this cold weather. GEFS is still well below average, just quite a few more uh, more warmer outliers. See, pretty warm over the next sort of three, four, five days, and then it turns much colder around the 26th, 27th of April, and continues much colder beyond that. You see the operational one going cool at times, a little bit of a mild spell around the 1st of May, but the majority of the time it is below average, and most of the ensemble members are below average. A lot of scatter, so still uncertain the exact extent of that cold weather, and of course with the exact um, precipitation amount, uh, amounts as well. Still precipitation around, but nothing too crazy, and not really pinpointed at any specific time, so a lot of uncertainty with that. If we do have a look at the ECM WF ensembles, they are much more, got a lot more certainty with it being colder around the end of April, start of May. You can see pretty decent over the next three, four, five days around, or totally above average, then well below average from around the 26th, 25th of April, all the way until the first week of May, where we are good five plus degrees below average, getting down to minus four, minus five degrees potentially on some of these ensembles. Very cold in Indeed, and increasing precipitation could even be some wintriness mixed in with that. Trending milder towards the end of the run, of course, with more uncertainty coming in, but still a chilly feel. 
If you do have a look at those two meter temperatures, you can see they are dropping substantially next week. Miles 14, 15, 16 degrees at the moment, potentially dropping down to a 10 to 11 degrees by next week. Even chillier in a few spots. And again, those low temperatures are going to just uh, are going to be sort of overdoing it a little bit. Most likely, will be dropping towards low single figures, if not towards that freezing level. Overnight frost, very possible. And even some wintry showers could be seen over higher ground, but not exclusively. We could even see it to low-lying areas for a time as well, depending on the exact setup. It's something we do need to keep an eye on. But at this stage, it looks pretty likely we're going to be heading back towards early spring, if not wintry-like conditions uh, and a wintry feel for the end of April, start of May. Really, really interesting indeed seeing this come off. So make sure you don't put away your hat and gloves and your coat yet. It's not going to be crazy cold, but perhaps it, it might be just about cold enough to need that in the morning, um, or in the early mornings with an overnight frost or late at night, or even if the, in the day, if we do get that wind chill up, it could feel really chilly indeed. So this is something we need to keep an eye on. Not guaranteed, but it's looking more and more likely every single day. And that setup with the high pressure towards Greenland is coming on all the models now. So it is looking quite likely. So anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you enjoy the relatively decent weather we have around at the moment. And I'll see you again for another video soon.